Okay, I, I hope I have enough uh, energy in my computer to finish this, uh, this paper. I wanted to thank Andrea for the wonderful style of chairing, <laughs> for bringing likeness um, to this long uh, series of, uh, of talks. And I introduce myself by saying that I'm, a, I'm um, somebody who's been studying uh, the internet, basically digital technologies, new media, uh, since the 1990s, uh, and that uh, over the last uh, year and a half, um, I've come to, you know, I come to find myself involved more and more with uh, um, experiments and uh, meetings and groups and collectives, cooperatives, uh, uh, which are dealing with the question of uh, monetary creation, how to create money. And uh, through these groups, I come to understand, um, and also uh, by studying in a certain way, the evolution of money as a technology, as a political technology, I come to understand money as something that is not just uh, a subject for economists, but money is something that can be designed uh, a social, a technical, a political, an artistic problem, uh, not just uh, about exchange or debt or austerity, so not just something that we should be subjected to, uh, but also something that opens up to the future. Uh, the question of money and money creation, we learned from the way the financial market works, uh, is about uh, what kind of futures do we want to invest with, uh, where do we want our energies, our collective energies, to be directed and channeled? And we have been expropriated of this uh, uh, right to make decisions about uh, uh, where uh, you know, we want to uh, invest uh, our uh, collective accumulated wealth uh, and what kind of futures we would like uh, to, uh, you know, to, to create. So I started uh, looking at the internet in 1990s, and if you rem in, you know, those of you who were around would remember that it, everything was about the gift economy. Uh, the gift economy was about the absence of money, it was about people doing uh, uh, things just for the love of it. Uh, it was not mediated by this evil, bad thing, which was money. The gift economy uh, then became uh, a kind of uh, a digital economy of free labor, so it became about the internet being driven uh, uh, by uh, the free uh, contributions of participants uh, uh, to mailing lists, uh, uh, to the web, uh, to the uh, functioning of the internet, and after that, we have moved uh, even uh, uh, more farther away from uh, even this activity. We are in a condition where we talk about the like economy, so all it takes is just to click something repeatedly according to a kind of automated uh, impulse, and then uh, you're already generating value. And after that, now we are in the so-called sharing economy, where you kind of uh, capitalize on spare space, spare time, on spare vehicles, uh, allowing centralized applications to externalize uh, uh, risk. So monetization uh, has become more and more uh, key to the whole economy of digital media and computer networks, uh, plus social media platforms uh, uh, turn uh, users' uh, contributions and activities into data, and then they turn data into money. Uh, I learned uh, from Bob Meister, I, I think I really enjoy reading his work lately, it's been a recent discovery for me, uh, about how social media data uh, that we generate by using the internet is actually used to generate new financial products, so it becomes directly part of the process of financial accumulation. Uh, in all of this, uh, uh, I've been guided in trying to make sense of how money comes to operate within this uh, uh, economy of social media uh, by post-workerist Marxists. Uh, I've been part of uh, uh, collectives uh, with uh, Andrea, and uh, you know we know each other through our experience with Uninomade, Ephemera. Um, later, so I participated to their uh, to their meetings, and I learned from them uh, their interpretation about how. Uh, we come to a situation where money become more and more immaterial, between inverted comma, uh, how money has lost its reference in gold, first through the Bretton Woods Agreement, but also at the same time in the labor time theory of value, that is in the number of, of hours worked, which was the measure, for example, of Proudhon's uh, money, which was supposed to calculate the number of hours uh, uh, worked. And from the notion that money has become, uh, increasingly become uh, uh, a pure sign or a sign of command. And this is where I kind of uh, uh, stopped in a certain way um, following you and I'm kind of questioning a little bit uh, this idea that money is a pure sign and a sign of, co of command or a linguistic sign be 
because I think that this experimentation with uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, but also the evolution of the stock market, uh, the use of uh, uh, models uh, such as Black Scholes models, uh, uh, demonstrate is that it's not just a sign or a linguistic sign, but it's increasingly a combination of linguistic uh, signs and an executable data structure. Uh, which combines logics uh, and mathematics uh, together with this linguistic science uh, to generate this uh, effect that we are all subjected to of accumulation and privatization of the capacity to decide on our future. Uh, I think that the, this uh, notion that money is uh, increasingly become a socio-technical invention uh, has uh, been pushed onto us both by the financial market, which has managed the miracle of uh, multiplying money keeping the inflation uh, low, and they've done this uh, through logical and mathematical models, uh, through algorithms, uh, uh, through algo trading, and on the other side, uh, from Bitcoin, which uh, represents for me a kind of alternative answer uh, that occupy Wall Street to the financial crisis. So what Bitcoin it was an answer to the WikiLeaks blockade, when all the PayPal and Visa and all the kind of major financial actors on the internet uh, stopped the flow of money uh, uh, to WikiLeaks. Uh, so they decided to create this currency, which is Bitcoin, to demonstrate you know, that they could uh, have a currency which worked technically. Uh, in doing that, they opened a whole site of uh, technical experimentation and uh, uh, this has caused the Bitcoin uh, blockchain protocol, which is the basis, distributed ledger, which they, you heard about, to fork. There's been uh, um, Jaromil and a decent project uh, documented the many, many different types of forks, including fair coin, free coin, common coin. Uh, we're going to have also the hood coin from Robin Hood. Uh, um, uh, more about it. Um, um, maybe I'm going to close, uh, close with that. And so we're in the middle of a uh, um, moment of really interesting social and cultural and artistic experimentation with finance and the creation of financial instruments and currency. And uh, this is something uh, that uh, is going to take place in Athens as well. I'm also part of uh, a cooperative called Robin Hood and uh, uh, Rob Meister as well. Uh, all of us who are here now are going to join the Robin Hood office in two days. And this has been also really in interesting and exciting space to discuss uh, what does it mean? Uh, what does it mean to be able to think about money as an artistic, cultural, and technical and social creation? We should be able to both contribute to this financial blockade, to this new forms of strike uh, that uh, Bob Meister was talking about, and also to uh, ease uh, some of the stress uh, that uh, Sylvia and Elenia were discussing uh, when they were talking about the crash of Macau. You know, the fact that a lot of our endeavors to produce autonomous institutions uh, uh, actually uh, run on uh, affective energy, personal involvement, and that we need to think about socio-technical mediation um, about that, because otherwise we end up fetishizing the collective too much and thinking, you know, that giving up your soul to the collective is going to solve everything with all the kind of guilt trips uh, that result when uh, this doesn't happen. So uh, my little contribution uh, to this is just saying uh, we should, um, even those of us who come from the humanities and uh, from arts, we should really open ourselves to the idea that we can think both uh, about reinventing, redesigning different forms of currency, financial instruments as a way to appropriate the future, uh, a finance based on credit or the credit that we deserve <laughs> and we should give ourselves uh, rather than debt and guilt to sustain our collective endeavors and inviting you to join uh, uh, Robin Hood in two days with all of us here and, uh, and more at the circuits and current uh, space. And my apologies to the translator because I know they requested um, some kind of script to be able to translate and I just didn't know what was going to be the best uh, um, uh, take on this question of alternative currencies given the context, so I waited until the last, uh, the last minute. So apologies for that. Thank you.